everybody. Welcome back. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Sage and I am starting a homestead here in North Carolina uh, with my boyfriend. So far we have a garden and some chickens and although he is gone, he's been on a, um, a rock climbing trip for the last couple days and so things still gotta get done. So this morning I am going to feed the chickens. I was considering moving them, but it's raining. <laughs> so I think I'm going to procrastinate that one until tomorrow. Hi white chickens, do you want some food? Now, let's talk a little bit about the good stuff. How are we saving money on feed? I'm gonna show you everything that we're doing so far to try to save some money. To start off, this is our feed for the meat chickens. The future egg layers are also still on this because I haven't started laying eggs yet. This is just a 20% protein uh, grower starter mix. It's organic, we get it from a local feed store and we go buy it in 50 pound bags. We could buy feed in larger quantities, um, but you essentially have to buy it by the thousand pounds to get a discount. And especially because it's cracked, it's not whole grain, um, you know, it, it wouldn't store. It only stores for like three months and we can't go through a thousand pounds of feed in three months. We also don't have a forklift to be able to unload that. So there are a couple obstacles to us being able to, to buy in more bulk and get that discount. Um, but who knows, you know, a few years down the road, we might also be doing that. And now that the rangers are old enough, we are starting to mix their feed with corn. We are getting that corn from the same place that we get our feed. Um, that feed store doesn't keep the corn in stock, but they can special order it from the same farm that the organic feed comes from. So last time I went, I picked up two 50 pound bags of corn and because the rangers are eight weeks old now, I think it is, um, they don't need to have the same 20% protein, you know, their entire life. And so the corn is not only cheaper, but it helps to bulk them up a little bit more um, so that they can put weight on a little bit better than if they were on a higher protein diet. Um, so it's not just 
that the corn itself is physically cheaper and replaces it. Um, but, and I, this is untested, but I'm 99% sure that it's gonna help them gain weight better than that volume of food in the grower feed itself. We could have started adding corn to the ranger's diet at six weeks, but because the feed store has to special order it, I wasn't, I didn't place my order soon enough. So at six weeks, we could have started to do uh, four parts grower feed, one part corn. And now that we can do three parts grower feed, one part corn. And if you're curious what our feed schedule is, you know, exactly how much we feed our chickens at what age, um, I actually posted all of that on a recent video, which I will link down below for you. And just for reference, we pay about $36 before tax for a 50 pound bag of this grower feed, while we pay just under, I think, $25 for 50 pounds of corn. Another thing that we do to save cost on feed is we ferment it. So we measure out what a day's dose is and we fill this up with water so that there's a couple inches of water above the feed line and we let it sit for three days. As long as you keep a couple inches of water above the feed line and as long as you keep your buckets clean, you shouldn't grow anything nasty in there. Um, you shouldn't, you know, be rotting your feed. It should just be um, fermenting it a little bit and in theory, that can save you 10% on your feed. It does require you to get a few food grade buckets and lids, um, so there is a cost there, but you should more than make that back in what you save in feed if you have a decent amount of chickens. If you don't have the space or the time or the ability to remember to ferment your feed, you can still soak it. Um, soak it soaking it won't add that 10%, but it does do a couple things. Um, it helps fill them up faster because the feed is soaked in water. Um, it prevents them from wasting food. Um, feed can be kind of dusty. And so it can be hard for them to eat all of the tiny little crumbs if it's dry, but if it's wet, it all sticks together um, and it, it just helps them eat more of it. And the last thing we do to save money on feed is we run our chickens on pasture. Because they're on grass, they can forage for bugs, they can eat the grass itself, they can eat the grass seeds they find, they can forage for themselves. And if you have a really healthy pasture, they can get up to 20% of their food needs from the land. That is 20% less feed that you have to feed them. Unfortunately, our pasture isn't that great. Uh, and so the lesson that we learned with the last batch of chickens that we raised is that we can't quite work off of that 20% number. So with this next current batch of meat chickens that we have, we're working with like 15%. While I take a break from the rain, um, let's talk a little bit about all of those. So if you only have, you know, five backyard chickens, it might not be worth it to you to ferment their feed. You know, we, our current layer flock is six chickens, five hens and a rooster, and we don't ferment their feed. We do let them roam around the front yard, so they actually do get probably more like 20% um, of their food intake from not us. Uh, just because it's fewer chickens in a larger space, also happier grass. Um, but it's just not worth it to us to take the time and energy to ferment their feed, plus that would mean that we would have to get, you know, more buckets and we don't need a thousand buckets laying around. Um, so, you know, customize it to what works for you, customize it to what makes sense for you. And Aspen has decided to join me. <laughs> so if you see ears poking up, that's who it is. Also, corn is new for us. Um, we did raise a batch of meat chickens earlier this year and there, you know, when I was sitting down to do the calculations for how much each chicken cost and how much we had invested in feed in total and all of those things, um, you know, there was a little bit of sticker shock there and a little bit of disappointment um, that they weren't bigger. It's our first time. I'm still very overall, you know, overall very happy 
with what we got, but there's certainly room for improvement there. Um, and so corn is one of the improvements we are trying to make. And as far as the quality of our pasture goes, that's only going to improve as we continue to run chickens on it. Um, you know, every time we set up their netting and put them there for a few days, they digest the food we give them and turn it into um, a form that the grass can use. And granted, we haven't been here for more than a year yet, but it does look like the grass is already healthier, especially in the spots that it was really struggling. Um, so, you know, there's, there's already suspected improvement there. And even though we can't necessarily get the full 20% that would be ideal uh, from the pasture and running the chickens on it now, free ranging, um, you know, maybe we can get there in a couple years. That would be fantastic. And so, assuming that you can get 20% of your chickens' food needs from whatever land you're running them on, assuming that you can ferment their food for three days, and assuming that um, you can replace some of their food needs with something a little cheaper like corn, you can save almost a third of your feed cost, which especially for us, because you know we are doing organic, that is huge, that is so huge. And even though we spent a lot of money uh, feeding the first batch of meat chickens that we did, we would have spent so much more if we weren't running them on pasture and fermenting their feed. So I am, <laughs> even though I'm looking for more efficiencies, I am super grateful for the ones that we started out with. You know, we're learning, we're trying new things, and we're sharing it with you guys because that's the whole point of this channel, right? Um, and so we don't claim to know everything, we don't claim to do everything perfectly. But um, I do want to show you guys and share it. And of course, um, after we harvest this batch of chickens, we'll be able to look at things like corn um, and see if it actually makes sense. But I really, really do think that it is something that we will continue to use. If you guys enjoy our channel and want to give back to us, you can go buy us a cup of coffee. I'll leave the link to that down below. Um, and our current goal is to raise enough money to buy a bag of grower feed, which is about $40 after tax. Um, everything that you guys care to donate to us, we will put straight back into the homestead and we'll show you what we get with it and how we use it. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.